Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Brad Muscle, and this will be the, be the video where I will try to go through and document all 716 footnotes for the utility of religion, Mill, Nietzsche, and James. Uh, as promised in my intro uh, video, I think that was video zero, as I've been numbering them, um, as promised in that video, I'm going to go through in detail and try to indicate uh, where I've gotten each of these footnotes, where the sources came from. So this is quite a task to say the least. Um, I guess kind of the strategy I had in mind was I'm not going to, so the ones I actually read, right, that weren't just citing a source as I read, did the readings where I went through and actually read them the footnote, I'm not going to detail those. I'll just acknowledge that I did so in the readings and then move on. Here, my aim is to actually detail them the ones where I just said um, the foot, footnote 52 cites the source, right? Here you're going to get then, well, what was the source? Uh, my intention here is to give you that source, show you, you know, if you want to explore um, those routes further, then provide you with the way to do so. And so this was quite the task, just tracking down all this stuff after many years. Um, here's my list where I had to go try to get all these books that I worked with. And so you're going to see like the actual copies that I work with or worked with when doing the dissertation. And I was pretty successful tracking everything down with uh, a couple of exceptions. One notable one would be Nietzsche's Will to Power. I have no idea uh, where that's disappeared to at the moment. Um, but if I tried to track down every single thing, I think I, you know, I don't know that I'd ever be able to make this video. So uh, I did, um, you yeah, know, oh, another qualification I guess I would mention is that I don't, I didn't bother, so I dug out this box again, my dissertation box out of storage. I didn't bother actually finding the copies I had and worked with for each of the articles I printed out. They're in here somewhere, um, you know, in these stacks. But again, I mean, all kinds of articles and research in here. But uh, again, I don't know that I'd ever be in a position to actually make a video if I spent the time to do that. Um, but I will indicate, you know, the full names of those articles, the pages I worked with for each quotation. Um, so you will get that info. Uh, but I, as I did go th through some of this, it was just, it kind of drew back, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, nightmares for me almost, um, just the kind of detail uh, one has to go through to write a dissertation and then to try to defend it. Uh, this is, I forgot I did all this, this was Nietzsche's The Antichrist, so what I, what I would do for every one of these primary works that I worked with was I would read through them and take very detailed notes, and so this here, is, for example, I went through and numbered every single paragraph in the Antichrist and su sort of summarized. So that, that then was my summary of each paragraph. And so I had that at the, out, at the outset. And then, like I said, for each particular paragraph, you know, detailed notes. And so, um, oh, that reminds me of the James. So this is just my notes going through the varieties of religious experience. And a lot of it is like, I would, you know, put verbatim what James is, James said, for example, you know, I would copy it. Um, and then the idea being, well, later when I'm writing the dissertation, it's, you know, because I thought it was pretty relevant or pertinent or significant, I might want to use it. Um, I, you know, I put those things down for word for word, what James said. And then later it was actually um, helpful because I could just copy and paste them. As James says on page, you know, and I did it by pages for James. As James says on page 181, or in lecture, whatever that one is, what is that? Lecture 8. In lecture 8, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it was quite the tedious task at the time. Uh, but in a sense then, so if any of you are, you know, contemplating doing something similar to this, you know, it does, it is quite the meticulous process. And again, you spend years, like, diving into this stuff. Um, but then as you write the dissertation, if you if you approach it, at least with this strategy, the idea is then the dissertation itself, you have all those, you know, um, quotations already then in your notes to just easily then put right in the dissertation. Anyway, some uh, insight into uh, sort of flashbacks I had and recollection of sort of the process um, 
that that entail. But anyway, so I guess without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just dive into this. Uh, I tried to gather all these books. Um, I guess first, real quick, I'll just introduce the main players, so to speak. Uh, this is the, I don't, I think in the episode or episode uh, video, the zero video, the one where I introduced my readings, I mentioned that I went through and worked with this one to the point where it fell apart. And then I was looking around for the the other one I worked with, and that's actually the one I, on my second full reading through, that's the one I went, this one is the one I went through, and it was actually sitting right here in that video the whole time, but this is the one, it was the Proudfoot edition, um, this is the one that I worked with in the, for the most part, I do uh, reference Niebuhr's uh, introduction in particular from this one in the dissertation, but usually when I'm working with James, it's this one. And then the John Stuart Mill, right, subject to chapter one, uh, Utility of Religion, that was from this. So I have a full collection of 10 volumes, uh, or it might even be more than that. Um, and this is uh, volume 10 of his complete works. And you can see where the three essays on religion are in this particular one. Um, all the notes and stuff I took in those particular sections. Um, you know, just really detailed stuff as I went through there. Uh, but everything I quote from Mill, and for the most part, uh, in the, you know, from Utility of Religion is in here. And then the Antichrist from Chapter 2, that Nietzsche text was from this version, the Norman version of the Antichrist. So those are the main players, if you will. But otherwise, I'm going to ha go ahead and just dive in then, starting from the very beginning work my way through this beast and again and to try to indicate footnote by footnote how you can then further pursue those particular sources okay so actually in the very beginning of the introduction i referenced the book that set me down my philosophical path if you will that really started me questioning things in some general sense and that was this one i don't think i ever have a footnote for it though but that's the bertrand russell very first sentence maybe or the second sentence where I reference that book. But then footnote one, I'm not going to read that. I did read it uh, in my readings, but it references Sam Harrison's The End of Faith, which I do reference fairly frequently um, throughout the dissertation. So that's this book. And I'll give you um, more in terms of the publisher inf information on that later when I actually quote his book for the first time. So that was Footnote one, footnote two, I cite adherence.com, major religions of the world ranked by number of adherents. And uh, so I give the, the website there. And I should say that um, you can go and get, again, in every video I provided, the written copy right, of the book, of my dissertation, where you can then see all this spelled out. So for example, this, right? You can get literally exactly what I have here, okay? And so I don't know that I'm necessarily going to read out websites or the URL, I should say, but I'll indicate I'll indicate the website in these sort of situations and the title of the the page uh, and the date of access. So I accessed this on November 10th or t November 5th of 2010. Okay, but I'm not going to read out the URL. You can go to the written version, right? That you can go access via the University of Kansas if you're interested in doing that. Footnote three, it comes from the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, www.census.gov, okay? and I accessed that June 3rd of 2014. Footnote four is when I start referencing this, okay. and I reference, so that's John Stuart Mill, The Collected Works of John Stuart Mill, Volume 10, Essays on Ethics, Religion, and Society. Edited by John M. Robinson, Robson, introduction by F. E. L. Priestley, Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 1969, and in that particular footnote, footnote four, I reference page 403. Footnote five references page 403. Footnote six references page 403 from this. Footnote seven, there's some reading that I read during the um, during the uh, reading of the dissertation, and it's from page 406. So that's that. And this is all the introduction, by the way, and that is 
all of the footnotes in the introduction. So footnotes one through seven, that was the introduction. So footnote eight, I again cite this, which I've already uh, rattled off the publishing publisher information. So I cite in footnote eight, page 405 from this. Footnote nine, I cite page 402. Footnote 10, I cite page 403. Footnote 11, I cite page 405. And again, this is chapter one now. Footnote 12, I cite Robert Carr and his article, The Religious Thought on John Stuart Mill, A Study in Reluctant Skepticism. And that's from the Journal of the History of Ideas, volume 23, number four, October through December, 1962, page 488 is the page. So again, that was footnote 12. Footnote 13, I'm not going to read that. I did do the reading uh, in the, I read through it during the, my, the, my readings video, but I did cite the Carr article again, specifically page 494 of the article. Okay, and that was the first thing I quoted. And the second thing I quoted is from 494 of the article again. And the third thing I quoted at the very end is from page 495 from the article. Right. So again, all those were from the Carr article first cited in footnote 12. So that's footnote 13. Footnote 14 is back to Milligan, page 406. Footnote 15, page 406 again. Uh, I read footnote 16 during the readings. Footnote 17, we have our first reference of Daniel Bennett's Breaking the Spell. Okay. Religion as a Natural Phenomenon. It's New York Penguin Books, 2006. In this particular quotation, I reference pages seven through eight. Then footnote 18 is back to Mill Collected Works, page 422. Footnote 19, I cite Lou Matz's article, The Utility of Religious Illusion, a Critique of J.S. Mill's Religion of Humanity, and that's from Utilitas, Volume 12, so the journal is Utilitas, Volume 12, Issue 2, 2000, the page is 143 in that journal. So that was footnote 19. Footnote 20, I read during the reading, oh boy, hopefully I'll be able to find most of these, but I do cite Eric Fromm's in that footnote. I do cite Eric Fromm's Psychoanalysis and Religion, which is this book, and I cite the first citation is from page nine of this book. Okay. And then I also, in that footnote 20, I cite Freud and his civilization and its discontents, okay, which comes from, actually, I just referenced it in general, but that's, so that's that. Then footnote 21 is back to uh, Dennett. So this is footnote 21. I quote page nine. Okay. And then footnote 22, I read during the reading video. Footnote 23, back to Mills Collected Works, page 406 from volume 10. So that was footnote 23. Oh, here's another one I couldn't track down. Volume, or uh, footnote 24, cites, although I did, I do have Walter Isaacson's uh, biography on Einstein right over there. There. Um, but the one I cite here at footnote 24 is Walter Isaacson, Benjamin Franklin, and American Life, which is somewhere in this house, but I wasn't about to try to track it down. I thought it would be somewhere here. Um, that's New York, Simon and Schuster, 2003, and I cited pages 87 to 88. Uh, so 25, footnote 25, references Frederick G. Whalen's Church Establishments, Liberty and Competition and Religion. And so I later then, so this is <clears throat> the original source is Frederick G. Whalen, Church Establishments, Liberty and Competition in Religion from Polity, Volume 23, Number 2, Winter 1990, pages 155 to 185. And again, that's footnote 25. Footnote 26 cites Carr again, and that's from that article, Religious Thought, page 485. Footnote 27 is again Carr's article, Religious Thought from uh, page 495 of that, I should say that journal, I believe. Uh, footnote 28, we get our first reference of Schopenhauer. And I believe all my, I hope all my Schopenhauer references are from this 
Um, interesting book. I don't know where I originally picked it up. This is the first book I had on Schopenhauer. It's just very mysterious. One thing about it that's kind of mysterious is that it has no date of publication. So as I indicated, so again, this is footnote 28. Arthur Schopenhauer, the essays of Arthur Schopenhauer. New York, uh, Willie Book uh, Company, no date of publication. And in this particular footnote, I'm citing pages one through two, one and two. So that's footnote 28. Footnote 29, I cite, and I will cite quite a bit, I believe, uh, Gregory S. Paul's article. So this is an article, Gregory S. Paul, his article, Cross-National Correlations of Quantifiable society, Societal Health with Popular Religiosity and Secularism in the Prosperous Democracies, a first look. Wow, what a title. In the journal, Journal of Religion and Society, Volume 7, 2005. So I cite, so I actually access this on the internet and I cite paragraph six then, and I won't rattle off the URL, but again, if you go to that footnote, you can see the, the URL there. Um, and I accessed that on October 10th of 2011. So again, that was Gregory S. Paul's article. Footnote 30 references Mill again, page 416. So again, that's volume 10 of his collected works. Footnote 31. Same thing, for page 415 this time. In footnote 32, I, I read in the reading video. Same thing with footnote 33, already read that. Oh, this is a book I did not bring in that I missed when I went through these footnotes I do have in the library, and that's John Stuart Mill's autobiography. So footnote 34, I cite John Stuart Mill, autobiography, Boston, Houghton Mifflin Company, 1969, page 28 from the autobiography. Excellent read, by the way. So that was footnote 34. Foot, footnote 35, again, cites Schopenhauer and his essays. That This time from page 38. We're back to, in footnote 36, we're back to Mill and his collected works. Uh, page 407 from volume 10 here. That was footnote 36. Footnote 37, Mill, collected works, volume 10, page 407. And same thing with footnote 38, footnote 39. And footnote 40, they're all from this book, Collected Works, uh, volume 10, page 407. Footnote 41, same book, page 409. Footnote 42, we have same book, uh, page 408. Same thing with footnote 43 and footnote 44. They are also from this book, page 408. Okay. Footnote four, 45, this book, pages 408 to 409. I read footnote 46 in the reading video, so I'm not going to go through that here. Footnote 47, we're back to Collected Works Volumes 10, Volume 10, page 409. Same thing with footnote 48, page 409 from Volume 10. Vo uh, footnote 49 is pages 409 to 410 from same book. And then footnote 50, again, same book, page 410. Footnote 51 and 52 are also page 410 from this book. Footnote 53, page 411 from this book. Footnote 54, page 411. Footnote 55, page 412 of this book. And footnote 56, again, we're back at this book, volume 10, Mills Collected Works, this time pages 414 to 415. Okay, so that was footnote 56. Footnote 57, I read during the readings video, so I'm not gonna go through that in this Footnote 58, we're back to Mills, Volume 10, page 413 this time around. Footnote 59, pages 412 to 413 of this book. Okay. Footnote 60, back here, page 413. Footnote 61, I read during the readings. Footnote 62, page 413 of this book. Footnote 63, page 412 of this book. And... In footnote 64, I did read that during the readings, but I also quote this book, though, in that, and I cite page 408 of this book in footnote 64. Footnote 65, I read during the readings video. Uh, footnote 66, we get a reference to civilization and its discontent. Okay, this is the first time I actually quoted it. So it's Sigmund Freud, Civilization and its Discontents, New York, W.W. W. Norton and Company, 1961. 
uh, page 73 in that footnote 66. That's the, the page I reference is page 73. Footnote 67, I believe I read through that. Okay, but again, I do quote or I cite, I suggest readers take a look at procon.org. Pro does Christianity support the death penalty? And I'm not going to rattle off the URL, but I accessed that on June 25th of 2011. Footnote 68, it's back to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 424 this time. Footnote 69, page 424 again. Footnote 70 goes back to the Carr article, Religious Thought, okay, page 481. Footnote 71 is back to Mill again, and Volume 10 of Collected Works, page 416. Footnote 72, back to this book again, this time page 422. Footnote 73, did I not get this book? The Basic Writings of John Stuart Mill. I do not think I pulled this one in from the library either. So it's John Stuart, so this is footnote 73. John Stuart Mill, The Basic Writings of John Stuart Mill, New York, The Modern Library, 2002. And I'm quoting in footnote 73, I'm quoting page 143 from that work. Okay. Footnote 74 is back to this volume 10 from Mill's Collected Works page 416, as is footnote 75, also quoting page 416 from here. Footnotes 76, 77, and 78 are all from Collected Works, volume 10, okay, page 417. Footnote 79, Collected Works, page 415. Footnote 80 and footnote 81 from Collected Works, volume 10, from page 423. Let's see, footnote 82 cites Lou Matz's article, Religious Illusion, which I've already referenced. And that this uh, footnote 82 is referencing page 151. Okay, so that's 82. Footnote 83, I refer to Sam Harris's End of Faith again, which is somewhere around here. Okay. Footnote 84 is back to Mills Collected Works, volume 10, page 405. Footnote 85. We have Mills Collected Works, okay, pages 405 to 406, volume 10. Uh, 86, we are to back here again, and we're going to page 406. Footnote 87, we're going to page 424. Then we get a change up on footnote 88. We go to Soren Kierkegaard. Oh boy, we have an avalanche of books. Soren Kierkegaard, Fear and Tre Trembling is referenced. So Soren Kierkegaard, Fear and Trembling, Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press, 1983. And in that, I reference uh, page 20 and footnote 88. So I'm working with this book in the next few quotations or next few footnotes. So footnote 89 comes from Fear and Trembling and references page 47. Footnote 90, same book page 37, footnote 91, same book, page 40, footnote 92, same book, page 28, footnote 93, same book, page 66. Now in 94, there's a kind of a lot to unpack here. Uh, I did, it's a, an extensive, extensive footnote. I read through it in the readings video. Now I do cite this book a few different times in that um, footnote. So I cite, the first one is from page 66. I also cite then page 34 next, then next I cite page 72, and then 52, and then 33, and all of those references are from, uh, they're in within footnote 94 and they're all referring to this book, okay? Uh, then footnote 95 references this book again, page 31. Footnote 96, same book, page 34. I think we're finally done with, with you. Footnote 97, we start our discussion of Hauser and Peter Singer, Mark Hauser and Peter Singer. So this is referencing uh, a website I visited. So footnote 97, Mark Hauser and Peter Singer, Godless Morality from projectsyndicate.org. And then there, the URL is listed. And I access that. Okay, so it's this one right here. And I access that uh, November 12th of 2011. Okay. So, footnote 98, I referenced that same uh, 
article then, and I read through it in the reading video. Footnote 99 references the same article. In fact, the next, let's see, at least the next four footnotes then, footnotes 100 through 103. So footnote 100, footnote 101, footnote 102, and footnote 103 all reference that Hauser and Singer uh, website article, Godless Morality. Footnote 104 references an article by Russell Middleton and Snell Putney. So here's the source info for that. Russell Middleton and Snell Putney. The article is Religion, Normative Standards, and Behavior from Sosemetry. Yeah, I think I said that right. S-O-C-I-M-E-T-R-Y. Volume 25, number 2, June 1962, page 141. And then the next few uh, footnotes, in fact, quite a few of them, will reference that then. So footnote 105 references Middleton Putney, the religion article, page 142. Same thing with footnotes 106 and footnotes 107, also referencing the Middleton and Putney article, religion, uh, page 142. Footnote 108 cites the same article, but that time, page 143. Footnote 109, same article by Middleton and Putney, Religion, pages 143 to 144. Footnote 110, Middleton Putney, Religion, back to page 143. Footnote 111 and footnote 112 and footnote 113, all citing again the same article. Footnote 111 is from page 148 from the Putney, Middleton and Putney article. Footnote 112 is from page 149 of that article. Footnote 113 is from page 150 of that article. In footnote 114, I'm not going to read it, I read through it in the readings video, but it does reference, again, the same article, page 144. Uh, footnote 115 references the Middleton and Putney article, again, religion, page 151 that time. Then in footnote 116, refer back to the Paul article, Cross -nat National Correlations, this time paragraph 1. Footnote 117 references the St. Paul article, uh, again, this is from a website, I believe, paragraph 6. Footnote 118, same thing, paragraph 9. Footnote 119, same thing, paragraph 10. Footnote 120, again, same thing, Paul, cross-national correlations, footnote, or sorry, paragraph 13. So again, that was footnote 120. Footnote 121 is, again, the Paul, cross-national correlations, paragraph 15. Footnote 122 is Paul Cross National Correlations, paragraph 16, as is footnote 123, also cites paragraph 16. Footnote 124 cites Paul Cross, Cross National Correlations, paragraph 20. Footnote 125 cites paragraph 15 of the same. Footnote 126 cites uh, paragraph 16 of the same source. Footnote 127 cites paragraph 18 of the same source. Footnote 128 cites paragraph 19 of the same source. Footnote 129 again cites paragraph 18 of the same source, Paul, cross-national correlations. Again, paragraph 18. Footnote 130, again, Paul, cross-national correlations, paragraph 19 again. 131, we have a different article that's referenced. Okay, so this time, so this is the source information. It's going to be tough for me to try to say this. Mark Ter Wert, Albert Felling, and Jan Peters. The article is The Effect of Religion on Self-Interest Morality from Review of Religious Research, Volume 35, Number 4, June 1994, pages 302 to 323. Okay, and that was, again, footnote 131. Footnote 132 cites a different article. This is Quentin D. Atkinson and Perik Barat. Their article is Beliefs About God, the Afterlife, and Morality Support the Role of Supernatural Policing in Human Cooperation from Evolution and Human Behavior, Volume 32, Issue 1, 2011, pages 41 to 49. Footnote 133 cites another source. So this is James M. Bloodgood, William H. Turnley, and Peter Mudrack from their article The Influence of Ethics, Instruction, Religiosity, and Intelligence on Cheating Behavior. From Journal of Behavior, or sorry, Journal of Business Ethics, Volume 82, Issue 3, 2008, pages 557 to 571. Footnote 134 cites a different article, and this time it's from Kent R. Curley, Todd L. Matthews, and Troy C. Blanchard. 
their article, Religiosity, Religious Participation, and Negative Prison Behaviors, from Journal for the Scientific Study of Religion, Volume 44, Number 4, December 2005, pages 443 to 457. One, uh, footnote 135 cites that same article then. So Curley, Matthews, and Blanchard, Negative Prison Behaviors, page 450. Wow, there's actually a page without footnotes. Footnote 136. Oh, we're back to Mill. Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 418. In fact, footnotes 137, footnotes 138, footnotes 139, all cite 418, page 418 from Collected Works, Volume 10, John Stuart Mill. 140 is page 419 from this book. Footnote 141, footnote 142, footnote 143, all page 419 from this book as well. Uh, let's see, footnote 144, I read during the readings video. I'm not going to read it here. Footnote 145, we're back to this book, page 419 to 420. Footnote 146, this book, page 420. Footnote 147, this book, page 427. Footnote 148, I, I did the reading in the readings video, but I do cite this book, page 427, in doing so. Footnote 149 and footnote, footnote 150, both page 427, this book. Footnote 151 and footnote 152, both page 421, this book. Footnote 153 cites the Carr article, Religious Thought, page 485. Uh, footnote 154 cites the same article, Carr, Religious Thought, page 484. Footnote 155, same article by Carr, this time page 489. Uh, footnote 156, back to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 421. Footnote 157, same book, this time page 422. Footnote 158, same book, this time page 420. Footnote 159, same book, this time page 422. Then in footnote 160, we have a reference back to Freud and Civilization and its Discontents, page 26. Footnote 161 references this book as well, page 27. I read footnote 162 during the reading video. I'm not going to read that here. Footnote 163 goes back to... Freud and Civilization and its Discontents, page 44, footnote 164, this book again, Freud, Civilization and its Discontents, page, uh, page 40. Footnote 165, same book, Freud, Civilization and its Discontents, page 44. Then we're back to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 422 for footnote 166. Footnote 167, same thing, same book, page 421. Footnote 168 references Matt's article, Relig uh, Religious Illusion, page 144. Then footnote 169 returns to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 421. Footnote 170, same book, page 425. Footnote 171, same book, page 423. Footnote 172 I read during the readings video. I'm not going to read it here. Footnote 173, we have a reference back to Carr and Religious Thought, page 479. Footnote 174, back to this book, page, actually footnote 174, footnote 175, footnote 176, all page 404 from this book. Footnote 177, I read during the reading video, not going to read it here, and nothing is cited. Footnote 178, references Carr's Religious Thought article, page 486. <clears throat> footnote 179, I read during the readings video, but I do cite... Um, within footnote 179, Carr's Religious Thought article, page 486. Footnote 180 returns to Mill's Collected Works, page 423, volume 10 of Collected Works. Footnote 181 I read during the readings video, so I'm not going to reread it, but I do cite this book, page 425. Footnote 182 references this book, as does page, uh, footnote 183. They both reference page 424 of this book. Footnote 184, again this book, but this time page 426. Footnote 58, or sorry, that's page 58. Footnote 185 is Carr's Religious Thought again, page 480. Footnote 186 is Carr's Religious Thought, but page 476. And then footnote 187 is Carr again, Religious Thought, page 478. 
Footnote 188 is back to Mills Collected Works, Volume 10, page 426. Footnote 149, same book, page 428. Oh, so apparently I referenced a different uh, volume of this set, which I left out in the library. So I do reference footnote 190, John Stuart Mill, The Collected Works of John Stuart Mill, volume, what is that, 16? Journals and Debating Speeches, part two, uh, edited by John M. Robson, Toronto, University of Toronto Press, London, Rutledge and Keegan Paul, 1988. Let's see, chapter diary, 1854. Oh, and I access, actually I access this from uh, the website. Um, I provide the URL for that. And I access that on November 12th of 2011. So I Maybe some of them aren't actually available in hard, right, in a hard copy. Don't quote me on that. <clears throat> but that one was accessed via uh, the, the internet. So again, that was from uh, footnote 190. Footnote 191 cites the Matz article, Religious Illusion, page 145. Now, this, so footnote 192, I'm referencing the dialogue apology. I don't think I actually have the right book that I worked with. I have, you know, 50 books with Plato's dialogues out, out there. Um, so I did reference that it's the, let's see here, the Jolette. Yeah, this isn't the right. So I didn't bring in the right copy of basically the gist of it, of the apology that I actually worked with, the, the, the actual copy. Um, I'm going to provide the source info for the actual copy. So this is just uh, an example. I guess this one includes what, five or six dialogues, apology, credo, euthyphro, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the, the book I actually worked with in footnote 192 or I'm citing is Plato, Apology, from Euthyphro, Credo, Apology, and Symposium, the Joette Translation, Chicago, Illinois, Henry Regenery Company, 1953, page 41. Right, so that's, again, just like a collection of various uh, dialogues. It's, it's just a different one. <clears throat> okay, so then the next few uh, footnotes cite that same text then where I'm citing Plato apology so footnote 193 Plato apology uh, page 55 <clears throat> footnote 194 Plato's apology also page 55 then footnote 194 we re return to or sorry this is footnote 195 we return to Mills Collector Works volume 10 page 427 footnote 196 same book page 428 footnote 197 is Carr again religious thought page 494. Footnote 198 is Matt's, again, in his Religious Illusion, page 139, as is footnote 199. That's also from Matt's Religious Illusion, page 139. <coughs> Excuse me. Footnote 200, Matt's, again, Religious Illusion, page 137. Footnote 201, Matt's, again, Religious Illusion, uh, page 138. Footnote 202, Matt's Religious Illusion, page 150. Footnote 203, we're back to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 414. And then footnote, the last, nope, this is, I'm, I'm lying. This is not the last. Footnote 204, Schopenhauer Essays, page 37. Then I cite a new source on, in footnote 205, Kevin S. Siebold and Peter C. Hill, The, the Role of Religion and Spirituality in Mental and Physical Health, Current, and that's from Current Directions in Psychological Science, Volume 10, Number 1, February of 2001, pages 21 through 24, and then the, the next few uh, footnotes reference that same source. So footnote 206, Siebold, Siebold and Hill, Religion and Spirit, Spirituality, page 22. Uh, footnote 207, same source, page 21. Footnote 208, we have a new source, Harold G. Koenig, Article is Religion, Congestive Heart Failure, and Chronic Pulmonary Disease from Journal of Religion and Health, Volume 41, Number 3, Fall 2002, pages 263 to 278. In footnote 209, I have a new source. It's Richard Dawkins from his article, What Use is Religion? And that's from actually a website, secularhumanism.org. Okay, and I indicate the URL there. Okay. Um, and I accessed that April of, what is that, April 10th, 20, uh, 2011. 
And then I also note this article originally appears in the magazine Free Inquiry. Uh, so again, Free Inquiry is the original, I guess, place where it appeared in the magazine. And that's from Free, Free Inquiry, Volume 24, Number 5, 2004. So Richard Dawkins is the author. And again, the, the article is What Use is Religion? Uh, footnote 2, 210, I read during the readings video. I'm not going to read here. Footnote 211 is Dawkins, again, citing that same What Use uh, article that I cited a moment ago. Footnote 212 also cites that same article, What Use by Dawkins. Same thing with footnote 213. It's the Dawkins website article, What Use. And that is the last footnote of chapter 1. So that is footnotes 1 through 213. Chapter 2, we have Martin Heidegger being in time being referenced for the first time. Well, that's a meaningful cover. Maybe this is better. So Martin Heidegger, Being in Time, San Francisco, Harper and Row, Publishers Incorporated, 1962, page 32 is referenced. That's footnote 214. Footnote 215, we have a reference for the first time to Sigmund Freud's other classic, well, one of the other classics, The Future of an Illusion. Okay. And so to footnote 215, we're referencing Sigmund Freud, The Future of an Illusion, New York, W.W. W. Norton and Company, 1961, page 20. Then footnote 216, I cite the same source, page 21. Footnote 217, same source, page 30. So footnote 218, I cite for the first time the Robert Wicks article, Frederick Nietzsche, from the Stanford, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy article on the web. Um, section 1, I'm citing from that article, and I accessed that web, website on April 6th of 2012. And so I do work with Wicks's article quite a bit. So footnote 219, for example, I quote the Wicks Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy article, again, on Frederick Nietzsche, section 2 this time. Footnote 220, again, the Wix article, section 5 this time. Footnote 221, I, ref or I read during the readings video. I'm not going to read here again. Footnote 222, I referenced the Wix Nietzsche article again, section 5. Footnote 223, we reference, or I reference, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, this is what I was afraid of, not being able to find something. I don't know that I brought this particular copy in then. Um, let me just read off the source information. Apparently, I don't know that I brought this particular book of Nietzsche's in. I brought everything else in, seemingly. Uh, so this is footnote 223, Frederick Nietzsche, the Antichrist. Oh, duh, that's the main one. Wow. That's why I couldn't find it. It's on the other side. So this is the first time I'm referencing this then. So I think I can maybe toss this one. No, nah, I better... Not toss it too far. I'll probably reference it again here soon. So this is the main source of Nietzsche that I'll be working with. The first time I cited is footnote 223. Frederick Nietzsche, The Antichrist, Essay Homo, Twilight of the Idols, and Other Writings, translated by Judith Norman, edited Aaron Ridley and Judith Norman, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2005. And so this particular footnote 223, I cite page Roman numeral 9 okay, from this work. Footnote 224, I have a reference to this version of the gay science. So this is Frederick Nietzsche, the gay science translator, Walter Kaufman, New York, Vintage Books, 1974. And in that footnote or that reference, I cite section 110 in book three from this text. Then footnote 225, I go back and cite the Antichrist, section 55. Footnote 226, I cite the Antichrist, section 49. Footnote 227, I read during the readings video. Footnote 228, I cite Beyond Good and Evil by Frederick Nietzsche. So that's Frederick Nietzsche, Beyond Good and Evil. Translator Walter Kaufman, New York Vintage Books, 1966, section 108. The next footnote is 229. I cite Frederick Nietzsche, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, A Book for None and All, Translator Walter Kaufman, New York Penguin Books, 1954, Section 11, On the Spirit of Gravity of the Third Part. 
footnote 230. I reference or I, re I read through that uh, during the readings video. I'm not going to reread it here. Footnote 231. So this is the book I couldn't seem to find for whatever reason. Um, one of the ones I work with quite a bit, actually. It's footnote. So this footnote 231. Frederick Nietzsche, The Will to Power. Translator, Walter Kaufman and R.J. Hollingdale. Editor, Walter Kaufman. New York Vintage Books, 1967. This particular quote was taken from section 272 of that. Okay. Footnote 232 is citing Nietzsche, The Will to Power again, section 704. Footnote 233 is back to the Antichrist, section 2. Footnote 234, I reference the Merriam-Webster uh, Dictionary online. Um, and so I won't rattle off the URL, but I accessed that April 30th, 2014. I, I referenced, I believe, the definition for Shandala. Okay. Footnote 235 is back to Beyond Good and Evil, section 260. Footnote 236 is back to the Antichrist, section 45. Footnote 237, the Antichrist, section 24. Footnote 238, the Antichrist, section 45. Footnote 239, the Antichrist, section 30. Footnote 240 is back to Beyond Good and Evil, section 201. Footnote 241, the Gay Science, section 4 and book 1. Footnote 242 is back to the Antichrist, section 30. Footnote 243 is the Antichrist, section uh, 23. Footnote 244 is the Will to Power, which again, I don't have with me. That's the Will to Power, section 349. Footnote 245 is Nietzsche, Beyond Good and Evil, section 43. Footnote 83 is the Wix, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, article on Frederick Nietzsche, section 5. Footnote 247 is the Antichrist, section 2. Footnote 248 is, again, the Wix article, and that's section 4. Footnote 249 is the Wix article, again, Frederick Nietzsche, section 4, once more. Footnote 250 is the classic by Kaufman. So my first reference to this, Walter Kaufman, okay, Nietzsche, philosopher, psychologist, Antichrist, Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1974. And that reference is taken from page 16 of this book. So that was footnote 250. So back to this one in footnote 251. Um, this time I'm referenced in footnote 251. I believe I reference as a homo, though. Um, yeah, section three of the preface. Right. Uh, let me make sure. I'm right. Yes, so, that, so that's why I give the... Publisher information again if you ever come across the textual version of this. It's because this time around, footnote 251, I'm actually referencing the essay homo text within this. Okay, and specifically section three of the preface. So footnote 252, back to Nietzsche Beyond Good and Evil, section 177. Footnote 253, back to the Antichrist, section 36. Footnote 254, same thing, section 14. Footnote 255, same thing, section 44. Footnote 256, same thing, section 62. Footnote 257, same thing, section 12. Footnote 258, same thing, section 10. Footnote 259, same thing, section 26. Then we have a reference in 260, footnote 260 to William James, The Varieties of Religious Experience, New York, Barnes and Noble Classic, 2004, page 57. Then we're back to, in footnote 261, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 15. Same thing with footnote 262, also from section 15. Footnote 263 is referencing James, the Varieties of Religious Experience, page 88. 264 is back to the Antichrist, <clears throat> section 23. Footnote 265, the Antichrist, section 29. Footnote 266, the Antichrist, section 57 as is the case with footnote 267, also the Antichrist, section 57. Footnote 268, the Antichrist, section 29. Now, 269, footnote 269 I read during the readings video, 
but I do cite the Antichrist section 29 the first time, and then also the second quotation within that footnote is section 29 as well. So that was footnote 269. Footnote 270 comes from the Antichrist, section 52. Footnote 271, the Antichrist, section 23. Footnote 272 is the Antichrist, section 54. Footnote 273 is the Antichrist, section 50. I'm gonna get used to this one. The, uh, footnote 274, the Antichrist, section nine. Footnote 275, the Antichrist, section 23. Footnote 276, the Antichrist, section 52. Footnote 277, the Antichrist, section 47. Footnote 278, the Antichrist, section 48. Footnote 279, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 49. Same thing with the next two. So footnote 280, footnote 281 are both from section 49 of the Antichrist. Now the next two, footnote 282 and footnote 283 are both from section 48 of the Antichrist. The next two, footnote 284 and footnote 285, are both from section 25 of the Antichrist. Footnote 286, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 26. Footnote 287, the Antichrist, section 8. Footnote 288, the Antichrist, section 9. Footnote 289, the Antichrist, section 25. Footnote 290, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 24. Footnote 291, same thing, section 44. Footnote 292, same thing, section 27. Footnote 293, same thing, section 24. Footnote 294, same thing, section 39. Footnote 295, uh, I read it during the reading video, but I do cite the Antichrist, section 41. The first quote and then the second quote is the same thing, section 41 as well. Okay. And that was footnote 295. Footnote 296 cites section 42 of the Antichrist. Footnote 297 is section 39 of the Antichrist, as is footnote 298, also section 39 of the Antichrist. So footnote 299 goes back to Kaufman's classic, Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist, page 101. Then footnote 300 returns to Nietzsche, Antichrist, section 25. Footnote 301, same thing, section 6. Footnote 302, same thing, section 38. Footnote 303, the Antichrist, section 24. Footnote 304 cites a new article by Robert Wicks, this time the Arthur Schopenhauer article from, again, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And so this is the website, which I accessed on April 14th of 2012. And in this um, reference, I cite section four from that article. So again, Robert Wicks, Arthur Schopenhauer, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, section four. Okay, and I, I provide the URL there then. There. All right, so then footnote 305 also cites the Wicks article on Schopenhauer, section four. Footnote 306, Wicks article on Schopenhauer, section five. Footnote 307 cites the Wicks article on Nietzsche, section two. Footnote 308, cites the Wicks article on Nietzsche, section two. Footnote 309, cites Nietzsche, back to the Antichrist, section five. Footnote 310, cites the same thing, section 22. Footnote 311, cites the same thing, section 52. Footnote 312, cites the Antichrist, section 51. Footnote 313, same thing, section 14. Footnote 314, same thing, section 17. Footnote 315, same thing, section 51. Footnote 316 cites the Wicks article on Nietzsche, section 4. Then footnote 317 returns to Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 6. Whoops. Um, I don't know what version of, I guess it doesn't matter what version of the Bible I use, but um, footnote 318 cites the Bible, which I do have a copy I grabbed somewhere around here. Uh, Luke 9.23, footnote 3.19 cites the Bible, John 15.13, footnote 3.20 returns to Nietzsche and the Antichrist. Actually, footnotes 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, and 3.23, all of those footnotes re reference section 54 of the Antichrist. Footnote 3.24, the Antichrist, Nietzsche, section 14. Footnote 3.25, same thing, section 43. 
Footnote 326, same thing, section 14. Footnote 327, same thing, section 43. Footnote 328 is Richard Dawkins, What Use is Religion? I cite that again, which I believe I referenced earlier. Uh, maybe it was actually chapter one. So I, I um, in the footnote, I provide all the information again. Again, I accessed it April 10th, 2011. This is was originally published in Free Inquiry, volume 24, number five, 2004. It was, again, Richard Dawkins. The article is What Use is Religion? Footnote 329 is the Antichrist again, section 18, as is footnote 330, the Antichrist, section 18. Footnote 331, same thing, section 47. Footnote 332, same thing, section 17. Now, footnotes 333, 334, 335, and 336 are all from the Antichrist, Nietzsche, section 7. Same thing with the next two. Footnotes 337 and 338 are also from Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 7. Footnote 339 is the Wix article on Nietzsche, section 4. Footnote 340 I read during the readings video. Footnote 341 returns to Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 62. Footnote 342 is the Antichrist, section 21. Footnote 343, footnote 344, and footnote 345 are all section 20 from the Antichrist. Same thing with the next three. Footnotes 346, 347, 348 are all from section 20 of the Antichrist by Nietzsche. Footnotes 349, 350, and 351 all cite section 23 of Nietzsche's The Antichrist. Footnote 352 and footnote 353 are both section 20 of the Antichrist. As is footnote 354, The Antichrist, section 20. Footnote 355, same thing, section 21. Footnote 356 and footnote 357 are both section 26 of the Antichrist. Footnote 358 is section 49 of the Antichrist. Footnote 359 is section 62 of the Antichrist. Same thing with footnote 360, section 62 of the Antichrist. Footnote 361 is section 24. Footnote 362 is section 9. Footnotes 363, 364, and 365 are all from section 62 of the Antichrist. Footnote 366 is the Antichrist, section 28. Footnote 367 is the Antichrist, section 29. Footnote 368, excuse me, is section 30 from the Antichrist. Footnote 369, same thing, section 33. Footnote 1, or sorry, 1. Good thing we're not on 1. Footnote 370, the Antichrist, section 45. Footnote 371, the Antichrist, section 24. Footnote 372, the Antichrist, section 50. And then footnote 373 is the Wix article on Nietzsche, section 5. Footnote 374, a lot to unpack there. I already read it during the readings video. Now, there is stuff quoted. I quote first, thus spoke Zarathustra. First thing is I, qu I quote from that, and specifically section 2, uh, third part. Then I also quote... The Wix article on Nietzsche, section three. I quote Cobbleston. Where did I put this one? Oh, right here. I'll be referencing this a few times, but so I do reference in this footnote 374, this interesting history of philosophy. Cobbleston has like a, I don't remember how many volumes. I think it's like 14 volumes said. And so I reference Frederick Cobbleston, the history of philosophy, volume seven, part two, Schopenhauer to Nietzsche, Garden City, New York, Image Books, 1965, page 169. Um, also, Coppleston again, page 190, and I think that's all the quotations in footnote 374. Footnote 375 cites the Wix article on Nietzsche, section 3. Footnote 376, also Wix article on Nietzsche, section 3. Footnote 377, that's a homo, section 10 of why I'm so clever. So that's Nietzsche. Footnote 378 I read during the readings video. Footnote 379 I read during the readings video. Footnote 380 is the Antichrist section 57, as is footnote 381, footnote 382. Those are both also section 57 from the Antichrist. Footnotes 383, 384, and 385 are all section 62 of the Antichrist. Footnote 386 is section 3 of the Antichrist. Footnote 387 is section 37. Footnote 388 is section 43. Footnote 389 is section 37. 
Footnotes 390 and footnote 391 are sections 54, and footnote 392 is section 51. Again, all from the Antichrist. Footnote 393 is section 58 of the Antichrist. Footnote 394 is section 59, as is footnote 395, also section 59 of the Antichrist. Footnote 3, 396 is section 60 of the Antichrist. Footnotes 397, 398, 399, and 400, as well as 401, are all section 38 of the Antichrist. Footnotes 402, 403, 404, 405, 406, and 407, and 408 are all section 61 of the Antichrist. So again, footnotes 402 through 408 are all sec section 61 of the Antichrist by Frederick Nietzsche. Footnote... 409 is Beyond Good and Evil, section 186. And then we're back to in footnote 410, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 4. Footnote 411, section 50. Footnote 412, section 62. Footnote 14, 413, section 44. And then we have a new reference to Michael Hare, or Haar's book, Nietzsche. And Metaphysics, translated by Michael Jindar, edited by the same Michael Jindar, New York State University, New York Press, 1996, page 141. Then I go to quote in 415, I cite Nietzsche, Essay Homo, section 2 of Why I'm So Clever. Footnote 416, Essay Homo, section 3 of Why I'm So Clever. Footnote 417, Essay Homo, section 5 of Why I Write Such Good Books. Uh, footnote 418 is Nietzsche, the Gay Science, section 110 in book 3. Footnote 419 is Nietzsche's Will to Power, section 4, which I don't have with me. Uh, footnote 420, also the Will to Power, section 344. Footnote 421 is Will to Power, section 39. Footnote 422 is Will to Power, section 80. Footnote 423 is Essay Homo. Whoops. Section, I wonder if I've held any of these upside down over. Section 10 of Why I'm So Clever. Footnote 424 is Will to Power, Section 223. Footnote 425 is Nietzsche, Essay Homo, Section 1 of Why I'm So, such a, Why I'm a Destiny, sorry. So Section 1, Essay Homo, Why I'm So, so uh, Why I'm a Destiny, that's footnote 425. Footnote 426 is The Will to Power, Section 1007 by Nietzsche. Footnote 427 is Nietzsche, The Will to Power, Section 344. Footnote 428 cites Nietzsche's Essay Homo, Section 2 of Daybreak. Footnote 429 cites The Will to Power by Nietzsche, Section 68. Footnote 430 cites Nietzsche, a new work, for the dissertation at least, Untimely Meditation. So it's Frederick Nietzsche, Untimely Meditations, translated by R.J. Hollingdale, edited Daniel Brazale, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1997, page 181. Then I have reference 431, I reference the Antichrist, section 54. I read for, uh, footnote 432 in the readings video. Then we have a new reference, excuse me, in four, footnote 433, I reference Gilles Deleuze, Nietzsche and Philosophy, New York, Columbia University Press, 1962, page 147. Footnote 434, Deleuze, Nietzsche and Philosophy, page 147. Then I reference footnote 435, Martin Heidegger, N uh, Nietzsche, Volume 4, Nihilism, translated Frank A. Capuzzi, edited David Farrell Krell, San Francisco HarperCollins Publishers, 1982, page 32. So that's Volume 4, that would be this one. Okay. Footnote 436 cites Nietzsche's Will to Power, section 1. Footnote 437 also cites Nietzsche's Will to Power, section 1. Footnote 438 cites Frederick Nietzsche, The Birth of Tragedy. A new one here. Uh-oh. Things are falling. The Birth of Tragedy, translated Walter Kaufman, New York, Vintage Books, 1967, page 95. Footnote 439, also Frederick Nietzsche, The Birth of Tragedy, page 97. Footnote 40, The Birth of Tragedy, page 98. Footnote 41, Nietzsche, Essay Homo, 
Section 6 of Human All to Human. Footnote 442. Kaufman's Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist, page 82. Footnote 443, same source, page 109. Footnote 444 is the Koppelston, Schopenhauer Nietzsche, page 191. Footnote 445 is the Gay Science, section 110 in book, book 3. Section 446 is the Will to Power, section 4. Footnote 447 is the Gay Science, sections 108 and 125 in book 3 and section 343 in book 5. Uh, footnote 448 is Thus Spoke Zarathustra, which is somewhere around here. Here, Section 2 in Zarathustra's Prologue, and Section 3 on the Pitying of the Second Part. Section 449 is The Gay Science. You've seen that enough times. I don't know. Here it is. 449, footnote 449, Nietzsche, The Gay Science, Section 125 in Book 3. Footnote 450 is Kaufman again, Schopenhauer to Nietzsche, page 177. Footnote 451 cites Thus Spoke Zarathustra again, section 3 of Zarathustra's prologue. Footnote 452 is Nietzsche, Essay Homo, section 1 of Why I Write Such Excellent Books. Footnote 453 cites the Wix Nietzsche article, section 4. Footnote 454 is Nietzsche, The Gay Science, section 1 in Book 1. Footnote 455, Nietzsche, The Gay Science, Section 1 and Book 1 again. Uh, footnote 456, Nietzsche, Essay Homo, Section 10 of Why I'm So Clever. And footnote 457, I read during the reading, but it does cite uh, this Kierkegaard book, Soren Kierkegaard, The Sickness Unto Death, Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1954, page 262. So again, that was in footnote 457. 458 is Essay Homo, Why I'm So Clever. Uh, section 9 of Why I'm So Clever. Footnote 459 is a new source. Frederick Nietzsche, Selected Letters of Frederick Nietzsche, translated Christopher Middleton, editor Christopher Middleton, Indianapolis Hackett Publishing Company, Incorporated, 1969, page 7. Footnote 460 is James, The Varieties of Religious Experience, page 78. And I got books everywhere now. This is crazy. Uh, footnote 461, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, section 50. And then footnote 462 is Beyond Good and Evil, section 39. Footnote 463, Back to the Antichrist, the preface, as is the case with footnote 464, Nietzsche, the Antichrist, the preface. Then footnote 465 is Beyond Good and Evil, section 59. Then footnote 466 is the Antichrist, section 13. Footnote 130 is Koppelston, Schopenhauer to Nietzsche, page 174. Footnote 468 is Selected Letters, Nietzsche, page 282. Footnote 469 is Kaufman's classic Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, and Antichrist, page 58. Footnote 470 is the Selected Letters of Frederick Nietzsche, page 203. Footnote 471 is back to Kaufman's Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, and Antichrist, page 59. Footnote 472 is the Selected Letters of Nietzsche, page 206. And then footnote 473 is Essay Homo, section 2 of Why I Write Such Good Books. Finally, the last footnote, 474, for chapter 2 is Kaufman's Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, and Antichrist, page 146. And that brings us to chapter 3. So hopefully I can toss all these Nietzsche books aside once and for all here. Stop dabbling with them. So, pretty much all of the quotations from James are going to be from this same version of, again, William James, The Varieties of Religious Experience, Introduction and Notes by Wayne Proudfoot, New York Barnes and Noble Classics, 2004, page 16. And I note in footnote 475 that all subsequent references are going to be the, to this unless otherwise noted. Okay.
So footnote 476, James, varieties, uh, Roman numerals 15. Okay, I read footnote 477 in the reading, not going to go through it here. Footnote 478 is same, page 383 to 384. Then we have, this might be easier back here, footnote 479, varieties, page 17. Footnote 480 and footnote 481, varieties, page 18. Footnote 482 and footnote 483, varieties, page 26. Footnote 484, varieties, page 30. Footnote 485, varieties, page 35. Footnote 486, varieties, page 37. Footnote 487 and footnote 488, varieties, by William James, page 39. Footnote 489, footnote 490, both varieties, William James, page 41. Footnote 491, varieties, page 44. Footnote 492, I read during the reading video. Footnote 493, varieties, for, uh, page 464, as is footnote 494, also varieties, page 464. Footnote 495, varieties, page 39. Footnote 496, varieties, 40, page 40. Footnote 497, varieties of religious experience, page 104. Footnote 498, James, varieties. Uh, page 36. Footnotes 499, 500, 501, and 502, as well as 503, all come from James's Varieties of Religious Experience, page 37. So again, that was footnotes 499 through 503. Footnote 504, Varieties, page 39. Footnote 505, Varieties, page 220. Footnote 506, Varieties, two, page 267. Footnote, or sorry, yeah, footnote 507, Varieties, page 267. Footnote 508, Varieties, page 19. Footnote 509, James's Varieties of Religious Experience. Roman numerals, 27. Footnote 510, it's something wrong. Goodness, where did Dan Daniel Dennett go? Here it is. Ah. So footnote 510 is back to Daniel Dennett, breaking the spell, religion is natural phenomenon. New York Penguin Books, 2006, page 11 this time around. And then we're back to... Footnote 511, James, Varieties of Religious Experience, Roman numerals 27. Footnote 512 and footnote 13, or 513 and footnote 514, all three of those are, are uh, page 57 from Varieties. Footnotes 515 and 516 are both page 58 from Varieties. Footnote 517 is, again, page 58 from Varieties. Footnote 518 is page 60 from Varieties. I read footnote 519 during the readings video, uh, but I do reference page 60 of varieties within that footnote. Again, that's footnote 519. Footnote 520, page 73 of varieties. Footnote 521, page 66 of varieties. Footnote 522, page 61 of varieties. Footnote 523, page 62 of varieties. Footnote 524, page 63 of varieties. Footnote 525, page 74 of varieties. Are you still with me? Is there anybody out there? Footnote 526. I'm not going to read that again. Uh, I read it during the readings video, although I do cite, again, Varieties by William James, page 138, within footnote 526. By, uh, footnote 527, James, Varieties of Religious Experience, page 74. Footnote 528, same thing, page 75. Footnote 529, same thing, page 74. Footnote 530, same thing, page 75. Footnote 531, same thing, page 42, and 532, footnote 532, same thing, page 42. Footnotes 533 and 534 are both varieties of religious experience, page 44. Footnote 535 is varieties, page 45. Footnote 536, varieties of religious experience, pages 125 to 126. Footnote 537, same thing, page 87. Five, uh, footnote 538, same thing, page 79. Footnote 539, same thing, page 119. Footnote 540, same thing, page 79. I think I'm driving myself crazy here. Footnote 541, same thing, varieties, page 86. Okay, so footnote 542, I'm not going to read it, but I do cite page 84 of varieties. Footnote 543, same thing, I do read it during the readings video, and I cite, I'm not going to read it here, and I cite pages 119 and 120 in that, within that footnote. So again, that was footnote one, uh, 543. 
Same thing, 544. I'm not going to read it, read it during the readings video, but I do cite varieties, page 91, and varieties, page 101. Same thing with footnote 545. I'm not going to read it, read it during the readings video, but I do cite page 89 of varieties of religious experience. Footnote 546, varieties, page 86. Footnote 547, not going to read it, read it during the readings video, but I do cite page 87 of the varieties of religious experience by William James. Footnote 548, I read during the readings. Footnote 549, page 87 of varieties. Footnote 550, same thing, page 119. Footnote 551, same thing, page 122. Oh boy, here we go. Footnote 552, same thing, page 143. Footnotes 553 and 554, page 151 of James's Varieties of Religious Experience. Footnote 555, page 122. Footnote 556, James, Roman numeral, with so varieties by James, Roman numeral 21. Footnote 557, page 147 out of varieties. Footnote 558, page 124, same thing. Uh, footnote 559, page 133 from varieties. Footnotes 560 and 561 are both from page 135 of Varieties. Footnotes 562 and 563 are both from page 133 of Varieties. Page five, or footnote 564 is 44, page 44 from Varieties of Religious Experience. As is the case with 565, footnote 565 is page 44 from the Varieties of Religious Experience. Footnote 566, same thing, page 137. Footnote 567, same thing, page 138. Footnote 568, same thing, page 139. Footnote 569, same thing, page 148. Footnote 570, same thing, page 151. Footnote 571, same thing, Roman numeral, page 19. Footnote 572, same thing, page 88. Footnote 573, same thing, page 148. Footnote 574, varieties, same thing, uh, Roman numerals, 21. Footnote 575, same thing, page 177. Footnote 576, same thing, page 154. Footnote 577, same thing, page 171. Footnote 578, same thing, page 177. Footnote 579, same thing, page 214. Footnote 580, same thing, pages 215 to 225. Footnote 581, same thing, page 183. Footnote 582, same thing, page 184. Footnote 583, same thing, page 411. Footnote 584, I read during the readings video. I'm not going to read it here, but I do cite page 185 of Varieties of Religious Experience by James. Footnote 585, same book, same thing, page 186. Footnote 586, again, cites page 186 of Varieties. Footnote 587, cites Varieties, page 188. Footnote 588, James Varieties 203, page 203. Footnote 589, I quote and cite Varieties, page 398, and I believe I read it during the readings as well. Footnote 590, again, Varieties, page 399. Footnote 591, Varieties, page 400. Footnote 592, again, same thing, foot, uh, page 418. Footnote 593, same thing, page 287. Footnote 594, same thing, page 291. Footnote 595, same thing, and 596, same thing, page 292. So page 292 for both footnotes from 595 and 596. Footnote 597, page 293. Footnote 598 and footnote 599, page 296 of varieties. Footnote 600, oh, we're at 600. Footnote 600, James Varieties, page 296. Footnote 601, whoa, different, it's different. Oh, did I throw Mill away? Mill, here's Mill. Footnote 601, Mill, Collected Works, volume 10, pages 405 to 406. Footnote 602, I read during the readings. I'm not, I'm not going to read it here. Footnote 603, James, Varieties, page 239. Footnote 604, same thing, pages 240 to 241. Footnote 605, page 240, same thing. Footnote 606, same thing, page 240. Footnote 607, I read during the readings video, but I do cite page 240 of Varieties. Footnote 608, again, same book, Varieties by, of Religious Experience by William James, page 241. Footnote 609 and 610 both cite page 230 of Varieties by James. Footnotes 611 and 612 both cite page 159 of Varieties by James. Footnote two, or 613 cites page 251 of Varieties. Footnote 614, same thing, page 377. Footnote 615, same thing, page 255.
Footnote 616, same thing, page 54. Footnote 617, same thing, page 50. Footnote 6, 618, varieties, page 52. Footnote 619, same thing, page 47. Footnote 620, same thing, page 38. Footnote 621, same thing, page 47. Footnote 622, same thing, page 47. Footnote 623, same thing, page 53. Footnote 624, same thing, page 49. Footnote 625, same thing, page 104. Footnote 626, same thing, page 78. Footnote 627, same thing, pages 55 to 56. Footnote 628, same thing, page 242. Footnote 629, I read during the readings video. Footnote 630, same, footnote 630, footnote 631, and footnote 632, all cite page 311 of Varieties by James. Footnote 633 is page 312 of Varieties of Religious Experience by William James. Footnote 60, 634 is page 236 of the same thing. Footnote 635 is page 312 of the same thing. Footnote 636 is page 277 of the same. Footnote 637 I read during the reading, but I do cite page 279 of Varieties. Uh, footnote 638 is page 281 of Varieties. Footnote 639 cites the same thing, three, page 320. 640, I reference Plato's Republic. I don't know that I actually quote anything. <clears throat> Footnote 641 is back to Varieties by William James, page 319. Footnote 642 is Varieties, page 320. Footnote 643 and 644 are page 319 from Varieties of Religious Experience by William James. Footnote 645 is page, same thing, page 401. Footnote 646 is the same thing, page 399. Footnote 647 and 648 are both page 401 from the varieties. Footnote 649 is page 408 from the varieties of religious experience. 650, footnote 650, and footnote 651 are both page 409 from varieties. Footnote 652 is page 408 from varieties. Footnote 653 is same thing, page 411. Footnote 654 is the same thing, page 88. Footnote 655 is the same thing, page 122. I read footnote 656 during the readings. Footnote 657, Varieties, page 103. Footnote 658, Varieties, page 102. Six, footnote 659 and footnote 660 are both page 297 from Varieties. Footnote 661, Varieties, page 305. Footnote 662, same thing, page 261. Foot, footnote 663, same thing, page 298. Footnote 664, same thing, page 299. Footnote 665, same thing again, page 299. Footnote 666 is same thing, three, uh, page 310. Footnote 60, 667 and footnote 668 are both page 310 from same thing. Footnote 369 is varieties, page 311. Footnote 670 is varieties, page 312. Footnote 7, 671 is varieties, 298, page 298. Footnote 672 is varieties, page 300. Footnote 673 is James Varieties, page 304. Footnote 674, same thing, page 302. Footnote 675, same thing, uh, page 321. I could have probably come up with a much better system than this, and I wish I would have at this point. But alas, here we are. Footnote 676, same thing, page 19. Footnote 677, same thing, page 19. Nobody's probably listening anyway, are they? Footnote 678, same thing, page 31. Footnote 679, same thing, page 32. Footnote 680, same thing, Roman numerals 19. Footnote 681, same thing, page 126. Footnote 682, same thing, page 148. Footnote 683, same thing, page 128. Footnote 684, same book, same author, same text, page 129. Foot, footnote 685, varieties, page 127. Footnote 686, varieties, page 128. Footnote 687, same thing, page 130. Footnote 688, varieties, page 316. Footnote 689, same thing, page 131. Footnote 690, I read during the readings, but I do quote page 132. Footnote 691, page 130 of varieties. Footnote 692 is also page 130 of varieties. Footnote 693, I read during the reading, and I'm not going to reread. Footnote 694, ditto. Footnote 695 comes from Varieties of Religious Experience by William James, page 44. Footnote 696, I already read during the readings. And footnote 697, 
Oh, so that's the, so footnote 697. I do refer to um, this version of this one here um, because I believe I cite Niebuhr and I don't even have the full cover anymore. Um, but it is William James' Varieties of Religious Experience, Introduction by Ra Reinhold Niebuhr, New York, Macmillan P P Publishing Company, 1961, page 8. Six, uh, footnote 698 is back to this version, page 169. Footnote 69, 699 is back to this version, page 7. Footnote 700 is back to this version, page 289. Footnote 701, same thing, page 290. Oh my gosh, several pages and no footnotes. It's a small miracle. Uh, footnote 702, 702 already read. Footnote 703 is Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 427. Uh, footnote 704 is back to Varieties, page 131. Footnote 705 is back to Mill, Collected Works, Volume 10, page 427. Footnote 706, we're back to William James, Varieties of Religious Experience, Introduction and Notes by Wayne Proudfoot, New York Barnes and Noble's Classic 2004. So by the way, this is the first footnote of the conclusion, right? So footnote 706. And that, that again quotes uh, page Roman numerals 17 from this. Okay. Footnote 707, I already read during the reading. So I think the only other source I cite in the conclusion then is footnote 708. I reference William T. Kavanaugh's, or Kavanaugh's article does religion cause violence? Behind the common question lies a morass of unclear thinking. And that's from the Harvard Divinity School, Harvard Divinity Bulletin, volume, volume 35, numbers 2 and 3, spring and summer, 2007. And I actually accessed it through the website then. So I provide the URL and I accessed it uh, May 11th of 2011. So that was footnote 708. Footnote 709 again cites that same Kavanaugh article. As does footnote 710, footnote 711, footnote 712, footnote 713. Apparently, I didn't turn my phone off this whole time. Footnote 714, those all reference the same Kavanaugh article. Footnote 715, I already read during the reading. And footnote, footnote 716, I already read during the reading. So with that, I think we're done. Did you stick with me, or did you skip all the way to the end, or is no one even here? I don't know, but uh, that was all 716 footnotes. Um, hopefully that was not necessarily enjoyable, but uh, helpful in some regard. And if this turns out to be a video that doesn't properly save, I'm going to be so angry. Yes, that happened before. And let's hope that doesn't happen with this one. So anyway, that was all the footnotes for The Utility of Religion, Mill, Nietzsche, and James. Thanks. Appreciate it.